I'm Jessica Kinsley and I've got the Paddock Studio at the hearth. Um, today I'll be um, showing you how to make some collage cards with little bits of paper that you might have around your home um, as part of the hearth's first Kindness Through Culture Digital Festival. So I hope you find it useful and enjoy. So in this little video demo today, I'm going to be talking through uh, my approach to making these mini collages, uh, what they can be used for, the sorts of materials you might need to make them, and just some of the very basic equipment you need to just piece them together and stick them down onto a card if that's how you choose to use them. Uh, these are some of my examples here. I really enjoy making these cards um, when it's kind of the end of the day or I've got a lot of scrap things um, in a little pot that I keep to one side on my desk and it's just a lovely way to kind of lose an hour or two um, just playing around with composition. You can sort of lose yourself in just piecing small pieces together, gathering, rummaging a little bit if you've got a bit of a paper stash. Um, so I find these a really nice thing to do at the end of the day if kind of if work is done um, and I just want to enjoy a little bit of um, a little bit of mindful composition and collage I guess. At the risk of sounding a little bit blue Peter here are a few I made earlier um, and I'm just going to talk you through the pieces of collage that appear on these which might give you some ideas of things that you can gather in your own home or it might just help you keep an eye out for interesting things that could be used in collages if you like to keep um, a little craft stash of perhaps in your home somewhere. So I quite often use Brooke Bond tea cards in, the, in um, my collages, little scraps of vintage fabrics. So I tend not to throw away any small scraps. I think everything can be used. Um, and actually what I do is I keep this little pot on my desk, which is just a little cardboard gift box, but this stays on my desk and any little bits that I have left over, any bits of fabric, any little interesting pieces I've come across, they all go in there on my desk and then they can be rummaged through amongst other things for um for these cards so that's how i end up with these little interesting scraps of linen book pages you can see there that's a part of an illustration from a book page and we've got little snippets from books as well i'll talk through using words a little later on in the video little bits of old um tape measure there stamps another, another again another piece of linen the edging on that's quite nice so that gets used with an old photograph that I had, um, an old family photograph of a, an old bus. And here again, it's very much just using about, it's about using up scraps. So little bits of linen, little snippets of linen that have been cut out, little florals, tiny little bits of trim. But they, these really, these, this little exercise is all about um, how you arrange these, I think. You can make the, the tiniest little scraps look quite interesting um, if you arrange them and layer them with different materials and colours and stitches to finish them off. So again, we've just got some linen there. We've got a little scrap of a book page up here. You know, it doesn't even have text on, but it's just the, the quality of the paper goes nicely with the linen. And then it's brought out by the colours and the tea card and the stamp as well. So those are a few little examples. And I do have more, which I'll show at the end of the video as well. Okay. So it's very much just about collage, layering and laying things out to make a nice composition. Now I mentioned this little box earlier on, which is kept on my desk, which is full of all of the scraps, all the bits that don't get used, all the offcuts, things that can be cut up again and make quite interesting collages. Um, but what I do do, because I, I collect a lot of paper ephemera, I suppose you'd call it, is I keep them in small boxes. I've got one of those little stacking towers with drawers that pull out. So if you've really got lots of paper, I tend to sort mine. So I've got a box with, which is full of tea cards. I had some really generously given to me just a, a little while ago. So this one is tea cards and stamps, but you can see I keep lots of little bits and bobs. There's all coins in there, things that could end up on a collage. I've got another box, which is full of maps, and it's full of all of the little cards from threads. Um, these are actually French machine threads, um, and these are the inners. So instead of having a solid cardboard tube when I took the threads off, you actually had a little piece of rolled up paper, and that's what the thread was wrapped around. But actually, once you took the thread off and unrolled them, you've got these beautiful little papers that can be used for collage as well. So I keep all of those sorts of things. You can see there's maps in there, there's printed photographs, there's just all the bits and bobs that don't get used on larger scale pieces. So some of the things you might like to collect from around the home for this little um, workshop demonstration um, could include things like um, stamps, um, any lace bits of fabric or lace trims. There's some bits here. Just small scraps are enough. You can see this printed piece of fabric here that I've got is tiny. It's probably about an, not even an inch, inch square really. 
um, little cutouts, little collage cutouts. If you've got any of these old Brook Bond tea cards, they are great because they kind of um, really come to the foreground, I think, in a collage. They can really sort of be framed by all the other things that you put in your collage. Um, little ordnance, this, I found these. I've got a couple of these little Dunlop discs which came, I think, in an old bicycle repair kit tin when I was rummaging around buying vintage tins in a flea market. Um, book pages, so if you've got any old books maybe that are destined for the charity shop, I know it's always a bit of a... Um, it's it's hard to cut an old book up, but if it's just been, you know, resigned to a, a charity shop box or it's not being used, you can give it a new lease of life by using it in collage. Old pattern pages. Um, and, of course, if you've got any old sheet music, that's a really nice one to cut up and use as well for collage. So you can dig around in the house and you can find bits and bobs that you might have at home that you could use in one of these collages. Any little scraps of fabric are nice. I tend to use quite pale colours, but you can go for brights. Um, you can make these really cheerful. I think my palette tends to be quite pale because I work with um, older papers and older linens. So you have that nice um, kind of pale colour palette, but you can really add little pops of colour by bringing in different bits of um, printed cottons and then coordinating buttons and cards and things with them as well. If you are interested in doing something that's um, brighter as well, um, you might have things like colourful tissue papers at home. Um, you can even um, use things like all bits of newspaper. So it's just rummaging around really in the home just to see what sort of nice, interesting things you've got that you could use for collage. Baking parchment is quite a nice one as well, because if you crumple it and iron it, it's got quite a nice um, texture to play around with. And sometimes if you get that nice sort of brown baking parchment, uh, you get a nice colour from that as well. The only thing with bacon parchment is it's difficult to glue. So that's a good one to stitch, but not glue so much. Alternatively, if you've got brown parcel paper, just from packing parcels, um, that too is another nice little paper that you can use to tear and layer with collage. So the first task really is to go off and have a good rummage around, um, even if you need to pause this video, and just collect a lot of things so you've got nice things to hand that you can play about with, because I think the best part of this is the, the, the sort of the gathering and then the sorting and deciding what goes where when you do your collage. So if you've got um, maybe just a little dish like me of things beside you that you can rummage through, um, that's really nice to have to hand before you start making your collage so you don't have to keep getting up and going off and looking for nice bits and bobs to add to your miniature collage. In terms of actual equipment, it's really quite basic, to be honest with you. Um, I always have some paper scissors to hand and then some fabric scissors to hand for snipping all of those nice little linens. Um, I keep my needle case to hand and just some neutral thread. So I've got some pearl thread here. But if you've got different colours as well, you might have... I've just sorted these out, so I feel like I really want to show them off. It won't last long. <laughs> if you have lots of different colours and you'd like to have some uh, more colourful threads in your collage, then do by all means get some nice colourful threads to hand as well. Um, and then the glue I use, which I want to chat about a little bit, is um, this Anita's Tacky Glue. And it's just like a, I can only describe it as a sort of a half-dried pre-VA. So it's not very runny. It's not very wet. Um, so it won't really soak through your collage. But it's got a really, it's really good, um, it's really strong. It'll adhere really, really well. And it's not very expensive either. I can get, I get mine from the range, but um, you can also buy it online. Um, and this is one of the smaller sizes that they do, which I would recommend if you're going to buy it because it's a really good glue and it's got a really good precision tip. The only problem is sometimes this gets a little bit clogged. So I don't buy the bigger sizes because I just have to spend longer um, unclogging the nozzle. I tend to buy the smallest size and then I don't waste anything within the, the tube. Um, because it's easier just to uh, wash that nozzle out or, or poke a pin down it if it gets a little bit clogged up. So that can be a little bit frustrating with this one. Um, I tend to store mine upside down as well so that nothing gets wasted. Um, but it's really good. It's really good for collage. It will glue down most things, after, um, including sort of heavier cards. It doesn't really show through finer fabrics unless it's very, very fine. So you can glue things like linens, um, as I've done here with this one and you don't see glue marks. It doesn't really seep up through the, the, the fabric because as I say, it's not a very wet glue. So it's good for a range of materials. Um, it's really good adherence. It also doesn't um, soak the card. So your card, if you're gonna mount this on the greetings card, your card doesn't become kind of bent um, or out of shape because it's been wetted out too much with glue. So it's, this is not by any means an advertisement for this kind of glue. This is just after trying a lot. This is the one I tend to just, it's my go-to adhesive for any kind of collage that includes paper and fabric. So I would recommend that um, 
if you are shopping for craft supplies. Um, and other than that, you just need something to put your collage on. So that could be anything. It could be a piece of paper. You might want to pop it into a frame. I'll show you an example of a small glass frame I've got later on, which is quite nice. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. Um, but just a normal greetings card blank is nice to put these little collages onto. And I'll show you how to make them so that you finish your collage and then you stick it on something so that you won't see any stitch work on the inside of a card as well. So if you were to make something like this and send it to a friend, you could write across both sides and you wouldn't have any marks on the collage on the inside of your card. And those are the basic materials that you need to get started. Okay, so onto the fun bit, actually putting the card together. Now, I've collected um, a little group of things that I sort of think go together from the stash that I was showing you earlier on. Um, so I've got a tea card, I've got some book pages, I've got a little bit of tweed and some green or Ashley printed scraps, just really small pieces that I've got in the baskets nearby. Um, lace, button and a stamp. And the button and the stamp are all sort of colour coordinated with the tea card here. Um, so I find it really helpful to have something like this, like one image or one piece of paper with something interesting on it or a piece of fabric that is really prominent um, to have as the focal piece for your collage and then you can kind of build the composition around that and almost frame it by grouping um, all of these elements together. Before I start, the one thing I wanted to mention was, um, as I said before, I don't build these up and stick them down as I go. I make the collage and then, then I put it onto a card. So it is worth bearing in mind what you might do with this in the end. Um, so if you have um, a piece of card that you want to mount it on or a greetings card that you want to mount it on, it's useful to have it nearby just to give you an idea of scale. So if you are growing your collage around a focal point, it doesn't go off the, the, the thing that you want to end up mounting it onto. So that's just something that's handy to bear in mind and have nearby. Um, and if you are thinking about putting it in a frame, these glass frames are really great. This is a fabric collage that I've done and it is a bit probably big for the size of the stuff I'm going to do today, but you can buy different sizes online. And I really like these because actually you can see all of the raw edges and that's what I like about these collages that you could mount it onto cardboard and pop it into a frame like that. Or you could just take the collage itself and pop it into a frame like this. And you'd see all of those lovely raw edges and the real, the real shape of the collage as well. So that, that's another idea for um, putting these things into a frame. <clears throat> so as I said, I'm gonna take my dear um, Brooke Bond tea card as a focal point. And I'm just gonna start playing around with this. So I kind of move everything off to one side and I just really like this process because this is where I really get to play. Um, and I really like this illustration that's on this bit of old book page here. That's from um, an old Enid Blyton book. And I just like to sort of keep little snippets of books. I like this sharp corner and the contrast of a torn edge. So don't feel like you have to use scissors for everything. And just start to lay things together and see how they look. And this, as I said, it's a nice bit because this is where you get to faff about a bit. And that's the kind of the nice thing where you can just lose a bit of time, really, and play around and decide what it is you want to do and how your collage might look. Is it going to be is it going to be more um, square? Is it going to be landscape? Could it be something that's more portrait where your collage is actually a bit longer? So it's just something to play around with, thinking about composition, how things are put together um, while you've got all these little collage pieces. Um, and there is a degree of messing about. It never sort of happens first time. Um, and you can chop things down. I think that lace is probably a little bit too big. And just see how everything fits together. What I would say is I think that things look quite good in groups of three. So, for example, if I've got the card, the tweed, if I can pick this stamp up, I might have the stamp start layering. So you can see by putting having layers behind things that are colourful, you start to bring things to the fore. Um, I might think about putting a button on there perhaps, but it is very beige at the moment. You know, I might sort of make this um, lace a little bit shorter, I think. Um, so yeah, so groups of three look really nice and just layering things up to make those things in the foreground um, really stand out. So you're almost framing it by putting these little bits of collage behind it. So I'm just going to build that up again. I quite like that scalloped edge, so I'll make sure that sits there and that can be seen. I'm kind of going for a square shape because I'm working on a square greetings card. Um, but it doesn't have to sit within a perfect square. As I said before, it's quite nice to have all of these um, raw edges round and about. What would have been really great, wouldn't it, is if I had something with a ladybird on, because that's the title of the um, the chapter, and it's on the top of that page there that I've picked 
from the Enid Blyton book. So I have to pop that back there. I've got quite a nice little collage coming up. If you've got paints or pencils at home and you have little bits of illustration, you might want to add colour. I could potentially add a little bit of green in there for those leaves. But I think what I might do instead, because it is um, very sort of brown and beige, is I might just pop a little bit of colour behind it with this Laura Ashley fabric that I've got. Um, I've cut it a bit and I'm just going to pull at it because I don't really want too crisp an edge. I do like a bit of a, a bit of a textured edge. So I'm just sort of playing around with this little bit of fabric here, which is an off cut. Um, and it was a find at a local flea market. Um, but I don't have much left and I don't like to throw things away. So they can then become part of a little collage. So you can see I'm not actually sticking anything down yet. <clears throat> I'm just arranging. I'm just playing around, seeing how things look. Um, I kind of do this quite quickly now, I think, because I've been doing it for a little while. But it, it's, it is just nice to spend a bit of time and enjoy this kind of piecing together of a collage a little button might just finish that off there um and also i've just got one thing on the go at the moment but you might want to have a few different things so if you can't really decide maybe on a focal point or a piece of paper that you want to use and you've got lots of things to choose from by all means put you know two or three or four collages out at a time and just make lots of little arrangements little collections because that's essentially what these little collage are, collages are, the little collections of things that you've found that you want to piece together and present. So I think I'm going to go with that sort of composition for now. So that's the first step, is just get that composition together before we think about gluing or stitching, is think about how it's going to look. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned, a focal point is really handy. Colours of other things that you pick can also pick out the colours of the focal point. Um, but then contrasting colours like this green here can make things really come to the fore and stand up. And groups of three, as I said, uh, group, group, groups of three always look really nice. One thing I always add to my collages are little bits of text. Now, I do this by cutting up old books, as I said before. And this is a really nice oldie in a Blighton book, um, but it has been repurposed and reused a lot. Um, and it's made its way on lots of different cards and little bits of artwork. And you can see from the book... All I do is I go in, my daughter's been colouring in this one. I think that's quite lovely itself. That might make its way into a little piece of collage. It's quite naive. But you can see just from the, the gaps here, I just go in and I find the little bits of text that I want and I snip them out. And sometimes if you're scanning through a book, not reading it as such, but just scanning through and scanning through the words and you've got a picture in front of you that you think you're working with and you quite like, sometimes the odd words will just jump out at you and... You can almost take things, if you take things out of context, you can almost make up like a mini story or a mini statement by just lifting out words from sentences. And sometimes they are whole and sometimes you take words from separate sentences and build them up yourself. So I've got a few here that I've um, that I've cut out, which I, I'm not going to use all of them for this, but it's just to give you an example of how I kind of lift um, miniature statements or miniature stories out of books by chopping little bits out of them. So I've got a lovely time by the sea. That could be quite nice if I had sort of a, a maritime card or something that was a bit more um, maybe based on maps or something like that. In the darkening night. So you can really look at the different words and the different descriptive words um, to get a piece of text for your, car your collage card. But this one is the one I picked, which I'm going to use for this one. And it's gentle little creatures because I thought that was quite nice with the little... Um, deer there that are sort of springing through the woods and I'll probably pop that there and the text just kind of finishes off the composition and almost titles it. Well, so the next thing we need to do is start gluing it together. Now I mentioned earlier on I don't glue it onto the background straight away because if you're going to use it particularly for a card I tend not to um, like to stitch through that so the card stays nice and clean and blank inside. So this can get a little bit fiddly but this is how I glue my collages down together. I sort of work in reverse um, and I keep my glue nearby and I just start laying things, taking things off a piece at a time. If you think you might forget how you've got it laid out, take a little photograph of it on your phone first and then you can use that for reference when you're putting it back together later on. So I'm just going to peel these layers away one at a time. And I'm just going to start popping little, little, just little dabs of glue to keep things together. So I know I'm going to have, I'm going to put glue along this edge here because that's where the trim's going to sit. Don't worry if it's not sort of sitting on a, a solid background because stitch also later on helps it all stick together as well. I've got a bit of a, a blocked up nozzle 
in this glue already. It takes a little while to start running through sometimes. That's it. So just dabbing down glue. Again, this tacky glue is really good because it doesn't soak through, it dries clear. If you're using any kind of PVA craft glue, make sure you've got one that dries clear. And then if you do get a little glue mark anywhere, or if you're using it with fabric, it won't leave marks on your work. So I'm going to store that one upside down again, just so it always runs through to the nozzle. And I'll just lay that over there. And next thing I need to do is pop down my tea card. So I'm going to put the glue on the back of that. Again, you can see with these nozzles, they're really good because you get just the right amount out of them without it being too much. So I'm just going to go around the edge and then if there's any little holes there, you don't get glue on the, uh, the underside. Just make sure that all stays fairly straight-ish. We like a torn edge, but if you've got something really prominent in the foreground that goes a bit wonky, it'll stick out a million miles. So you can have all the torn edges and all the pieces that aren't straight in the background. But if you've got a focal point, try and get that lined up nice and straight. Now the next thing was, and a little bit of tweed, which I might pull off actually and just make that go over along the edge. So I'm just going to pop some glue on the back of the tweed. Again, this is really good because um, it glues paper and fabric really well. And if you do have any little bits that haven't glued properly after the glue's sort of dried a bit, we can use stitch to really secure and decorate uh, in the next step. Up there. So you can see when this is done, it's my stamp is next. When this is done, it'll be you'll be able to pick it up by itself and then either pop it in a frame or attach it to a card. So it'll be like a little freestanding card almost. So I'm gonna pop this little stamp here. And then I don't glue this on, uh, th this will be stitched on. But if I just gently pick that up, oh no, the glue is just starting to set, you can see that. It now comes up as its own collage, its own little piece. I'm just going to pop a couple of dabs underneath the lace there, just to keep that little bit of green in place. And again, when you if you do end up gluing onto a greetings card, you'll give it that extra bit of um, security, I suppose, by gluing it onto a background. So it will really um, all stay together for you. So you've got a little collage that you can hold up, pick up. The last thing that we need to do before um, we get this collage onto some sort of ground or greetings card or um, into a frame um, is to add some stitch to it now just to highlight little parts of it, uh, maybe bat down any little bits that haven't stuck um, and just finish it off with that little bit of um, extra decoration just to make the surface a little bit more tactile. Um, so now I've let mine dry a little bit so I can pick it up, it's not going to fall apart. Um, but it could do with a little bit of extra stitch just to just to work into it a bit. So I'm using some pearl cro um, crochet cotton um, and I'm going to just start sewing some really simple stitches over it just to highlight and help frame it. You can tie a knot in the end of your thread if you want to when you sew, but I try to keep these as flat as possible so that they glue down really nicely onto the back of a, um, sorry, onto the front of a greetings card. So when I pull through the thread, I do tend to just hold it at the back because I know that once this is glued, this one particularly is going to be glued onto a card. So I don't put a lumpy knot there, I just hold it. Because I know once that's glued onto the card, the glue will hold that in place and stop the thread from coming out. So some of the stitches that I tend to do are just ones that will pull in, just sort of stitch over the edge of the cards. So from that bit of fabric straight into the tea card there. So I would just create a little row of horizontal stitches. And again, little groups of odd numbers are good. Groups of three, groups of five. You can do as much or as little sewing as you like. It's entirely up to you really. This is just a nice bit. You can just sew into it a little bit more. Just some little straight stitches, perhaps some little cross stitches in place are also quite nice as well. So I'm do a few little stitches up there. And what you can do is just pass your needle through those stitches and that catches all that thread in. 
so it won't unravel and you won't have to tie a big cumbersome lumpy knot either. Just snip that off. So really straightforward stitches. I'm also going to sew my button on as well. Um, same sort of thing, just straight through the back. Um, I'm going to just pop a little stitch in the back just to help anchor this one because it will have the weight of the button on it. So just without tying a knot, just a little stitch in the back, just in the same spot, two stitches in the same spot. And that just anchors the thread without a big lumpy knot. What I would say, if you're going to add buttons to your piece and you intend on sticking it onto a greetings card and perhaps sending it through the post, is just bear in mind that if you put a button onto something, you're going to go into um, large letter territory. So if you're going to send it through the post, you wouldn't definitely need a large letter stamp on your envelope as opposed to just a regular stamp, which I think is just something worth bearing. Just, just worth pointing out, really, because... Um, what you don't want is this to get lost in the post if it's got the uh, irregular stamp on it. So just a quick one there. And then just I'm gonna go up and do a couple of cross stitches at this corner here. So just freehand cross stitches. I'm gonna bring that a little bit closer so you can see it because I'm aware that I am stitching beige on beige and it may be a bit difficult to see, but I'll show you some other examples of sewing on my sample cards as well in just a moment. So. Just a couple of little cross stitches. Just to finish off, it can be, as I say, really simple. And you can use contrasting thread as well. I'm using beige thread because, I, as I said before, I use vintage materials, so I tend to stick to quite a pale palette. And I've used pops of colour in the green in the background and a little bit of brown that I've used. Um, but if you want to use a brighter colour, do it by absolutely go for it because um, it can really stand out and you can really make your stitches stand out as well. Mine are made more added more for texture, I think. So I shall just wind that through the back there and snip that off. And just to give you some examples of other stitches, just going back to these samples here, if I can bring that a bit closer, you can see. So I've just got those vertical stitches again over the edge of the tea card. Um, I've used stitch in the bus card just to frame, sew the button on, go up the side there, and there was a little bit on the stamp. So really basic stitches, you don't have to be, you know, an amazing sewer or an embroiderer or anything to do with these. It's just a few stitches that anchor things in place, add a little bit of texture, stitch a button on. This one's quite a nice one because you've got those really frail papers and linens and then you've got all the little horizontal stitches that go along there. Um, just to show you a couple more where I've used different colours. These are still in plastic wrappings at the moment so I'm just trying not to catch the light but you can see there I've used the blue for the, the, the ships and the stamp. And then a little bit of grey cross stitch down the side of that tea card there. And these ones are actually made for Father's Day so if you do have any alphabet stamps at home or any stickers or letter set, any, any transfers at all, then by all means use those as well. I have a tendency to cut up old books, but it is quite nice if you add more to these cards as well. So that's just another couple of ideas. So very last step then, if you're going to work, put these onto a greetings card or a piece of card to pop in a frame perhaps, is just to turn it over and run the glue around all of the little pieces of collage. If you find that your glue does go through fabric, you might just want to put a few little dots onto the back of fabric so it doesn't um, show through. If you've got lace, just put the glue in the, the, the sort of the more, the dense parts of the lace so that it doesn't squeeze through onto the cardboard that you're sticking it onto. If you are going to just pop it into a glass frame, you don't really need to do this step. You can just put it straight into a glass frame and it's ready for display. So I've got some glue on the back there. Just carefully turn it over line it up you can see it's useful to have them quite near have your uh, card nearby if you're going to work on a card because it, it just helps you to just stay within that sort of boundary of the card so it doesn't end up going off the edges and just gently press it all down make sure no glue squeezes out of the edges and then you've got your collage onto a card if you need to press it between a couple of books for a bit if you find that your glue is not taken quite well um, then just do that and it should all flatten down nicely. And of course, if you've got a little bit of text that you want to put on as well, 
just a little piece of glue on the back. I need to unblock this nozzle again. It's one of the hazards of working with these different glues. Keep the pin nearby to unblock the nozzle when you're working. So a little run of glue on the back of that. And then I'm just going to just drop it there. That just finishes it off and just titles it. And there we go. So that's how you make one of the collage cards, sort of using the same kind of um, collage process that I do. Um, and it gets it all onto the front of the card. It means that you've got a lovely busy card which you could send to a friend or you could put in a frame. Or you could send it to a friend and they could put it into a frame. But it means that when you open the card up, there aren't any glue marks or any stitch marks. So it leaves um, plenty of space for your message. Um, and then they do look quite nice as I say, in a frame afterwards as well, or they can just go straight into a frame. Um, I just tend to put them onto cards. I hope you found that enjoyable and I hope you enjoy making some collages of your own um, and I hope you found the video useful. If you've got any questions or if you'd like to share some of the things that you've made, um, you can always get in touch with me via my um, website, jessicakinseytextiles.com or you can pop onto the Hearth website and go to the artist section and there's a little um, link there to my website if you want to show me something that you've made um, or just ask any questions. Um, enjoy. Thank you very much for watching.